So at this time of the year, most of our lawn should be recovering nicely and really just cruising along into the fall as we get into closer to our winter season. But some of you may notice you may have some brown stuff in your lawn and you're wondering what that is. Well, maybe fungus. So let's get out of the weeds. Last week or so as I've been kind of looking over my lawn and just kind of uh, just enjoying uh, the, the fall lawn care season, uh, I've noticed some little areas in my lawn that are starting to be dis kind of discolored, kind of an orangish color. And so I knew immediately, okay, what's this going to be? So I go and I look at the leaf blades and I notice I have some disease in my lawn right now. So I thought that it would be a good idea today uh, to do a video talking a little bit about uh, lawn disease and some kind of ways to treat them. Now first, the big thing is the time of year of when your lawns are going to be most susceptible to disease. Most of the time it's going to be around a change of season. So for us with cold season grass, the first hot spot we usually have is when we come out of spring and get into the summer. So whenever we're getting cooler temperatures, a lot of rain, and then all of a sudden it ramps up high temperatures and then a lack of rain. And then what ends up happening is, is this change of season in that makes the conditions right to get a uh, disease in your lawn. Now the same thing happens when we come out of summer into fall. What happens is now the temperatures go back down. So we went from really high temperatures and that, and now the temperatures are starting to get cooler and things. And so what can happen is now our lawns can be susceptible for disease again. Also now with these cooler temperatures, like for us here in Indiana, we're getting daytime highs in the mid to low 60s and at night it's getting in the uh, upper 30s or so. And so what's happening is, is the grass isn't growing that fast. So what can happen is, is if you have a disease that's in your lawn, if it's actively growing really fast, like in the spring, a lot of times you may not even really see it just because a lot of the disease affects the leaf blade. And so the grass is growing so quick and you're mowing it that you're never really getting a chance to really see it. Well, what's happening here now in the fall for us is that things are really starting to slow down with your grass growing. You're probably not having to mow your lawn every three days. Some of us could go seven, 10 days or so between mowings. So everything is kind of just slow in there and it can allow that disease to kind of set in there and you to actually start to see it in your lawn. Now, I don't want you to get the idea that my lawn's not looking very good because you can see from here, the lawn's looking really nice. It's doing really well overall but i just notice a spot or two if i just start to kind of walk through my lawn i can start to find little areas that have some different disease stuff going on and that's just kind of what i see just here or there kind of throughout the lawn now one option would be just to not do anything about it not to really put anything on it because we are winding down to the season but what can happen is if you're mulching your grass clippings a lot of the diseases in that can easily spread if you're mulching your clippings. So there is one thing, if you're still gonna have a month or so left in your season and you're mulching your clippings, you do allow it to spread throughout your, your lawn here. So if you do notice that you have a lot of these little areas in that that you're starting to see some disease, one thing to know is, okay, what disease is it? One common one that you'll see a lot of times with us with cool season grass is you'll see rust. And now rust is really easy to tell because it is more of an orangey color uh, compared to most of the other lawn diseases than that that you'll see. You'll kind of see almost at some times a bright orange kind of spots on the lawn and they'll actually rub off onto your hand or if you're walking through your grass, if you have a lot of it, you walk through your grass and you'll notice your shoes are orange. And so if you, you have that happen, very high possibility that you have uh, rust uh, in your lawn. So with rust, it's actually one of the easier lawn diseases to get rid of. And it's usually going to come about whenever you're either in a like low nitrogen state uh, and or a kind of slow growing time. So I ha kind of have a combination of both going on. Now it's been a while now since I did my last fertilizer application. So it's coming up for me to actually put down my next application. And also we've been getting the lower temperatures that I talked about. And so the grass isn't growing to kind of push that disease out of there. And so now it's allowing me to be able to start to see it actually in my lawn. 
So this is a great opportunity for me to talk a little bit about fungicides. Now I'm not going to go crazy into the weeds because this is getting out of the weeds. So I want to keep everything very simple. So typically fungicides that you're going to put in your lawn are going to go down for us homeowners usually in two main ways that we'll, we'll typically see. A lot of times if you go into the store you can actually get it in a liquid form where it'll be a hose end sprayer and so you can just attach it to your hose and you'll spray your lawn just kind of like a mass spraying of it. Well the other one that you can get is you can actually get it in liquid form like I have here and it'll just be in a liquid form and what you'll do is you'll actually mix it into a, a, a sprayer and then you can go and you can spot spray areas of your lawn or if, you, if you're if you doing a preventative application of, of fungicide you can just go and spray your whole lawn. With the liquids they are heavily concentrated and so you're only using a small amount of the liquid per gallon of water and so I'll walk us through kind of doing an application of it just to show you guys how easy it is um, but those are set two different options as far as what you're typically going to see for us homeowners uh, to be able to apply for fungicides on our lawn now when we get into fungicides one thing that I want you guys to pay attention to that I haven't talked about before on this channel every fungicide is labeled into a specific group and you will see that on the front labels of any fungicide that you're going to be uh, getting for your lawn. So now, for example, if I show this right here, if you see here, I have a bottle of propiconazole right here. And if you look on the top, you can see it says it's a group three fungicide. The same thing with that I just had right here with Eagle fungicide. If you look on it, it's down here. And you can see right there, it is also a group three fungicide. So I'm not going to get all crazy on what the differences between all the groups are, but just know that whenever you're seeing the same group number between fungicides, that's typically they're going to be attacking the disease in a similar form. Now this is important for us as homeowners because whenever you have disease in your lawn, not all of the disease is going to have the same genetic makeup. So if you are applying, say, propiconazole like I have here onto it, some of that disease is going to be more resistant to the application than others. And so what can happen is, is if I go and I see that I have rust in my lawn and I want to attack it with propiconazole, which propiconazole will take out rust, but if I want to attack it with a propiconazole, some of that disease is going to be a little bit resistant. So there may be some of it left over. Well, what can happen over time is if the next time I start to notice some rust, I keep hitting it with propiconazole every single time, which is a group three fungicide, it can start to build up a resistance. And so what will happen is then that rust will start to build up a resistance to where then you can get to the point to where I put down a group three fungicide and it doesn't do anything to it and it is resistant to the application. So really in simpler terms, you just really want to make sure that when it comes to trying to prevent or cure lawn, any kind of lawn disease, you want to make sure that you're mixing up your categories of fungicides. You don't want to always attack it in the same manner because of the resistance that the disease can build up over time. So a lot of times what you can actually see is if you start to do a little bit more research into the fungicides, a lot of times fungicides can actually play nice together and actually be mixed together from several different groups. So you might have a group three and a group 11 and you mix those together. And so then you're kind of giving yourself a bigger blanket of, of an application fighting against the lawn disease just because now you have two fungicides fighting it in different ways. And so that way it can help to cure or prevent uh, lawn disease in a much better way. And so now I want to show you guys how to actually do an application of fungicide using a liquid uh, form of it. And so the first thing you want to know is that you do not want to apply the fungicide when it's getting ready to rain so that, that way it doesn't get washed out. And then also you do not want to apply it before you mow. Uh, you want to be able to spray this onto your lawn and let it dry. Uh, before anything else is going to happen to it. Here I have a gallon uh, 
tank sprayer here, just a little call hand can, and I have my little wand here. And so this holds a gallon. And so you'll see these in backpack uh, of like four gallon, three gallon. Um, but a lot of times if you're just gonna be doing a small area, just getting a gallon one, I will give you plenty of product. Now, if you're gonna be doing a full blanket application over your whole lawn, you may not wanna go with something this small just because you're gonna to have to constantly refill. Because what typically what you wanna know is any kind of application you're doing of liquid is typically gonna go down one gallon will usually cover a thousand square feet. So just for my for my lawn, for example, if I wanna do a whole blanket application, I have 10,000 square feet. So I'll have to keep coming back and filling this up 10 times if I wanna cover everything. And so it's not really kind of an efficient way of doing it uh, if I wanna do my whole entire lawn. So just know how big your lawn is and kind of adjust there for what you think you're gonna need. Okay, so it's kinda of hard to see there, but uh, with this bottle here, it actually uh, has my measurements out for me, so I don't need anything to measure it. And so uh, the line up here is one ounce. Now for propiconazole, you, there's charts in here of saying what disease it is and how much you need to add. And so typically for propiconazole, for most of them, uh, there's a preventative and a curative. So uh, if you're wanting to prevent it, it usually goes down at one ounce per, uh, per thousand. And if it's curative, it's going to be two ounces per gallon of water, which will cover a thousand square feet. And so since I'm already seeing some of it, I'm going to do two ounces. And so I need to fill this up twice and get it in to my tank spur behind me. And so now when I'm spraying this, I don't want to just hold it over the area and just sit here all day emptying out my tank, praying that the disease is just gonna spray off of the grass. Uh, what you wanna do is just hit it and move on. And so if you're doing a full blanket application, you can keep your wand kind of like knee height. You don't need to be down on the grass real up tight. You can kind of be up knee height and just kind of walk. Hold it and just as you're walking. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of a different, uh, more educational video. Uh, look out for my video next week as I got something fun planned uh, for the Halloween season here uh, that we're entering into here being in mid-October. And so I'll see you guys next time when we get out of the weeds into a beautiful lawn.